It's a bit later now, I just had to go to bed and I figured I'd see how the starter inhibitor behaves. So, turning on the ignition, yeah, it's just gone. The LED is instantly off as it's supposed to be. So, it seems the box has some kind of issue when it's getting hot. Alright, first order of repair work on the road. This is Grandma's Dicky lamp and it's got a kind of wonky power switch and yeah, I have partially got it disassembled now, but figured we'd try and just kind of see if we can rejuvenate this switch a bit. It's, I think it's just a bit uh, oxidized, so I figured I'd shove it full of alcohol and uh, give it a go. Alright, so I gave it a proper big dose of isopropyl alcohol and we're ready to test it, but uh, I noticed that uh, uh, since this has one of its ancient ungrounded plugs, uh, it won't fit straight into the inverter, so I had to use a couple of test leads to just uh, Jury rig it up, but bottles plastic shouldn't be any electrical danger. So let's see if it'll run. Inverter on. Oh, I think it's just still a bit fucked. Yep, yeah, it's gonna need a new switch. Oh well. Don't question it, I'm a professional. Ooh. I needed one of these. Sweet. And while I'm out here doing stuff, I'm going to just uh, check over these battery terminals because, as you can see, they're a bit, shall we say, custom. And I've got some dissimilar metals here, which have caused a tiny bit of corrosion of a negative terminal. The positive looks quite fine. But I'm just going to clean this up a bit in case that's what's caused the starter inhibitor issue. I just finished the negative side. It was a bit crusty under there, but uh, nothing major serious these washers aren't well supposed to be conducting because we've got uh, this copper bar attaching to this uh, brass uh, strip here and that's the actual connection and this one looks real clean there's uh, just brass and copper there except for this one little shake proof washer and uh, yeah that, that's just going to make such a good connection i'm not even going to bother taking that apart and uh, the positive side it's I noticed I didn't do a proper job of cleaning this wire up when I installed it, so I cleaned it properly now, it was a bit gunky. But yeah, it is quite clean underneath, although I can notice that there's a lot of old uh, battery gel stuff there, so that could be causing a bit of a connection issue, so I'm going to clean that up properly. Uh, beyond that, everything looks pretty good on this side. Tiny bit of, connect of corrosion there, but that might be from old. Yeah, that's like acid caused that, some green uh, copper acid mix thing, probably want to clean that up though, looks a bit dirtier than the negative side. Yeah that looks a bit, a bit crap, lots of clean copper there still so it should probably work but uh, I've seen better days. Well, there we go, all cleaned up as good as it's gonna get. I did decide to just undo this a little and squirt some alcohol in it and twist it back and forth a bit to just scrub any nasties off, so this contact should be doing excellent now, at least until these dissimilar metals uh, gives me more issues. Granted, perhaps we can put some water driving 40 in there for its proper purpose, just give it a bit of a squirt to keep the moisture out, like so. Better than nothing. Alright, the inhibitor hasn't been giving me any grief today and right now it's flashing away as it usually does. So let's uh, put the key in and turn it on and see. Yeah, it goes off straight away. So now I'm pretty confident the van would start if it did that yesterday. Let's give it a couple of goes. Yeah, that seems to be doing okay. So let's just hope it was actually a dicky battery connection and it's not a box going bad because it's down there in that area. Uh, that inner grey compartment is stuffed full of old pants uh, as noise proofing so it's a bit difficult to get at. You know, that might be part of the reason why it's acting up because it's a lot warmer down there probably than it ever used to be. Uh, the area was just hollow really. Granted, it doesn't have any cooling, and if you put the heater on, there's heat going in there. So I'm not. I, don't, I figured it wouldn't make a difference, but 
Yeah, if it keeps, if it breaks in, I guess I'll have to dig into that and have a bit of a close look. But, but for the time being, I think I'm just gonna leave it like this and uh, remember to reset the clock. Well, that's not too big of an issue. There we go. <laughs> I think I've noticed I really dislike with this charge controller is it keeps doing these MPPT sweeps all the time even though there's no load on the system and you can see the battery voltage is clearly uh, fully charged and uh, yeah there's like 3 watts of load on the batteries right now since it's just the fans running not even the computer and uh, it keeps doing this pushing the battery voltage way up just in order to figure out how much power it can get out of the panels when it doesn't need any power. And sure you could remedy this issue by having like a voltage triggered dummy load to just like a car headlight turn on when the battery voltage gets too high but that's just silly. I do not fancy cities. I do not fancy cities or even suburbs whatsoever. So I have noticed while sleeping in here, it can get a bit stuffy in that the air gets kind of layered. You have a lot of uh, either cold or warm air down here and a lot of either cold or warm air down here. And there's a quite an obvious distinction right around the edge of a bed here where you have level one and level two. So what I've now done is uh, I was prepared and brought uh, a 140 millimeter computer fan this is uh, literally my old power supply fan which I ripped out uh, and uh, I've added it here under the bed to just kind of suck air from you know this lower level and just kind of move it uh, it's going to basically be blowing straight onto the wall here and I plugged it into one of my unused outlets and it's moving quite a lot of air it's a relatively powerful fan let's see it's rated uh, 300 milliamps, so well, that's a fair amount of power in that. So I'm just going to leave this running over the day. I've got more power in the batteries that I'm going to need since I have a fridge running indoors off a grid right now. So perhaps it'll be a bit nice in here when I get back. Ah, and to demonstrate the budget we're running this show on, here is the video camera memory card. Uh, that has shot basically everything on this channel. I got the, the camera in like 2014 and uh, this thing, uh, uh, someone pointed out some artifacts in uh, a previous video and thank you for that. Uh, I noticed this thing had over a terabyte of rights to it. It's just been shot on, emptied, shot on, emptied, shot on, emptied over and over and uh, it's just done for. You still get good read speeds out of it but sometimes it'll just clog up if you try to write to it and uh, not do a proper job so now I've got a new new card much fancier Co cost probably half as much as this one did since it's new and 32 gigabytes isn't a lot anymore so thank you for pointing that out I believe it was um, um, something reviews I uh, can't say for certain I'm so bad with names uh, and also uh, thank you to everyone who's done the Patreon thing uh, I have no idea how this is going to work out in practice, but I did some back of the envelope calculations when I before launching this, and I figured uh, I came up given some like rough statistics I got out of digging through some similar channels as Patreons to mine, but I'd end up at twenty two dollars a month within like a month, and we've overshot that by a lot. I mean, $30, that's not a lot of money, but to me, that's just, that's half of my monthly YouTube revenue, which is usually 60 to 70 sometimes $80 a month if I make something really amazing. So, thank you everyone who's pledged some money, it really means a lot. And to put $30 in a more practical perspective, that's uh, given my traditional fuel economy with a van, which I've been tracking, you can find it on Fuelly, uh, that's about 300 kilometers worth of driving. Right there. And there you go, third night on the road. Uh, Grants have been staying a couple nights at this particular spot now. 
uh, but uh, things to be learned. I've flipped the van around since I have a leaning issue where I was kind of sliding into the bulkhead, so we should be uh, having improved that. It was sitting a bit wonky earlier. Guess I'll find out. And now I'm just going to enjoy the fact that I can eat in a taxi and enjoy some podcasts while I fall asleep. Good night.